Welcome to the Conquerors Podcast. My name is Manish Kata, and with me today I have Jeff Goodnow. Just to let you know how much we love you, we recorded this episode 20 minutes ago, and my f- video stopped 20 minutes into it, and the file is corrupted, and so I don't know if this one's going to be better or worse because we're angry, um, but I'm fired up now, so how are you doing? <laughs> well, I guess the topic things that piss, uh, prices that piss you off. Oh, oh you're yeah, already so the, in a the, fired so the subject, up. <laughs> you're already fired already up, man. You're off. already fired up. All right. So, Well, if we were on a call the other day, and someone's like, Manish, you okay? And I'm like, sorry, I got resting bitch face. Um, <laughs> you know, just deal with it. You'll get the occasional smile, but I, I, don't, I don't know. I guess I figured when, when videos start, I need to probably smile more. Anyway, the, the topic of this... Uh, conversation today is uh the pricing to piss people off and um <laughs> it, honestly it's it's it the title came from a chat conversation i had with a, a tech company where i was arguing about something and i i responded i said listen do, do you guys literally create your pricing to piss people off um and of course you know he didn't answer it was probably rajesh in bangladesh but either way he had he didn't he didn't answer um so, you and I discussed this, and we're like, yeah. all right, let's, let's talk about some of the real-life things that come up that piss us off when it comes to pricing, and also some industry trends we're seeing when it comes to that as well. So, what do you got? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one of the things, it's funny, I thought, well, you know, we always try and do a little bit of research. I, I, one of the things that always got me frustrated was a tire disposal when you get new tires, but I started doing a little bit of research, and I found out that's, that's actually something required by each state makes their own guidelines. So, it's not something that any shop gets to... You know, it's, it's not a, a revenue generator for them. So I miss, I skipped that one, right? But here's another one that from when it comes to mechanics, and I did this recently to get an oil change, and I went to the dealership just because of where we were and the, the timing, and there were a couple other things that I wanted to have done uh, that I didn't want to just, you know, go to Jiffy Lube or Valvoline or whatever. And the shop charges, right? I mean, you price your, your, mm-hmm. your here's your oil change. It's, you know, eighty nine ninety five or whatever the hell the price is. No, no, not really. Because then by the time you, you do a couple other little things, you, you have a labor charge and that's so much money. A lot of places, and most people don't realize this, mechanics uh, and, and shops usually add shop supplies or shop charges at the end. And oftentimes it's a percentage of the labor cost. Well, okay, except that if my you know I have a big project done... Is the labor cost that that shop charge as a percentage of labor cost really? Did it take cost you that much more to you know wash your shirt and you know get clean towels? I mean you know this is this is the stuff that frustrates me, or pisses me off because, you know look I, I get it if there's something you want to tell me about then line item it, or just make it ninety five dollars for the for the service work inst- you know what whatever price you're advertising instead of eighty five. But to start nickel and diamond and suddenly you get 14 extra charges at the end of the bill, uh, I, I just, it goes everything against the simplicity and, and process that, that, you know, I like to have in things. Keep it transparent. Keep it simple. So there I get on my soapbox a little bit. Well, yeah, I had a, I had a buddy down in, down in Florida that left his dentist actually because on every visit they had a charge uh, to clean the supply. It was a supply cleaning charge. Are you shitting like, well, me? Isn't this like, yeah, like part of the, the cost? Like, And it was just this extra $5 I threw on every time. And, I mean, this is a high-end dentist office. It's very nice, you know, great waiting room. And then they just do that little dig. So, um, yeah, I get it. I mean, and, and so my example is from, from traveling. I know we haven't traveled for a while, um, but, but it's the resort fees. And I know there's, oh, yeah. I think, some lawsuits or some industry people really fighting this. So the trick is that when you search for a hotel on Google, uh, resort fees aren't included. So what hotels are doing to compete for searches is they're decreasing their hotel price and increasing their resort fee. And so a local hotel that, that uh, you and Kim stayed at and I had Jen come down at, mm-hmm. you know, th- to compete, they, they lowered it down to like 115 and their resort fee was something like 50 or 60 bucks. Uh, yeah. and, and yes, of course, after you click through, it'll show you your total cost. But, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily, you know, follow, follow that down the rabbit hole. Well, it's yeah, like, sometimes. I found a hotel, let's book it, get it done. Yeah, I know, because I, I think it was 175 when I stayed there a couple of years ago. So that makes sense, right? Lower it to 115 and then charge 50 or 60 bucks for, for extra. And the reality is, right, a lot of us get busy, uh, like, uh, oh, it's five minutes, I need to find a hotel, find a hotel, oh, there's the price, uh, that's reasonable. Boom, book it, 
done and you know you don't really take the time which obviously we should in a perfect world you know kumbaya have a lot of time to you know dig into the details but um you, you gotta it's a good reminder you gotta keep your eyes open yeah and along those lines are the additional tip scam uh and a lot of people <laughs> have gone through this at resorts and conferences where you get the bill there's a tip and then there's an additional tip um, and what, what, so what's happening is our, our cities are starting to do this. So uh, I live in Fort Lauderdale, so we go to Miami a lot. There's a 16-block radius of South Beach. So it's, you know, anything north of it, they don't do this. But the 16 blocks, they add 20% gratuity included no matter what. Even if you get a $10 beer, they're adding that, that gratuity, and then they have the additional tip section. And once again, look, it, it's just why like why do that i understand if, if if you're going to you know say look we're going to require these tips fine then don't put the additional part in there right um it, i think it's just disingenuous when, you, when you're quickly signing a bill or with some friends you know you can easily get get suckered or into or, that. or so, do something here's you know, what i would like instead of calling it additional tip be creative make it a, a extra tip if we crushed it you know put some fun line in there right did we really crush it you want to leave us a little more great right you know what that's funny enough shit i might leave something on there even if you were just average but here's a tip uh, and imagine, then here's an imagine extra tip. uh imagine the marriott trying to get did we crush it past compliance <laughs> uh, onto a onto a bill mm, true uh, that i don't think that's gonna fly true that okay um all right so look the uh, there's a million examples and if you have any examples out there in your life that that pisses you off uh let us know it, yeah, it's okay to it. be pissed off once in a while with some with some pricing so Let's talk about inside the industry, maybe, or the or the business of running an RIA firm. Uh, we go through a lot of different services uh, that we use to to run this company. Uh, you know what comes up there um, uh, that that really rubs us the wrong way. And so one thing that that I have an example of is, is specifically we use a cloud server called Ignite. And we had five user seats and we needed to add a sixth one. I get in touch with them and you can't just add one. You have to buy five. And, but I don't want five seats. I just want one. Of course, that was never discussed ahead of time. It was a pricing change they made. What do you do? You're not going to change your whole cloud server. But it's just it's just a, a, a gut punch. Like I'm never going to recommend them to any small business because of that. Um, and the second is our CRM system, HubSpot. You know, we have a 2,000 seat uh, contact limit, and we went well, to hold on. Not, not 2,000 seat, but yeah, the contact limit. Not, Sorry, not 2,000 contacts in, in the system. Yeah, 2,000 contacts in the system. And I think we went to 2,005 or six, something barely over, and it's an extra $100 a month charge. And it's just like, come on, really? Like, I'm not going from 2,000 to 10,000. And of course, you know, you get on chat with them, and they have no leeway whatsoever. They're just, they're just robots, right? Um, and that this was actually the genesis of this podcast is, is HubSpot and how they, you know, basically just like no, if it's if it's one person over, the, the extra charge applies. Um, but anyway, I know you had a specific example of something you went through uh, last year as well, or a couple of years ago, excuse me. Yeah, and I mean, I think you're, you know, the advisors that are listening to this are probably already getting the the gist, which is basically, you know, screw the small business owner, um, and that's that's where mine comes in because again, it's it's big big business, big entity trying to milk it for everything they're worth. My example, you know, frankly, was uh, was e money. Uh, that was something that a couple of years ago we decided that all right, we needed to bring some additional service to our our clients uh, that we had, and and financial planning would be one of those things that we could do. Well, that's great and dandy, except that right out of the gate, their default contract is to charge a full charge, a full seat license for every single licensed person in your office. And, you know, look, I, this is this is where I say small business gets screwed all the time. It, We're trying to benefit our team by allowing them to benefit themselves and, and to improve themselves by getting a license. That doesn't mean that they're going to go do a financial plan for a client. Um, and you know, for us, it was a matter of, look, there's a couple, we need a couple full licenses and the rest is just admin stuff. I mean, if somebody needs to do something, and I think you were working with, with Caitlin maybe on the back end that was, uh, that was an additional piss on that one. Yeah. I mean, she was, she was just trying to do, set up the integration between, you know, this software and other software, which of course didn't work. But the fact is like every time she tried to go in and get help, they're like, well, you're not licensed. And she would just say, look, I'm just trying to set up the back end and, and they weren't having it. So, you know, it's just, I would get a code, I would give her the code. And, and then you put your customers through this, you know, uh, jumping through hoops just to 
be better at your software you know and, and so you know i get both sides of it but at some point there's the human side where it's like look let's just get them up and running you know and then down the line if someone really likes your software they'll probably go buy more seats yeah. um you know i think inherently people aren't trying to necessarily um trick the system right they they just they don't want to pay for 10 seats if they're only using two yeah exactly um and 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 i remember that was the frustration with this and look we're not trying to necessarily throw any one company under the bus it's the, these are things that come up in our lives and and it's it's good to good to share that and then so one of the things you brought up in our conversation earlier was you know what about specifically uh with you know platforms or custodians or, or things that maybe have to do more with the client uh experience and the client account uh, anything come up in, in recently or in your history that, that uh, needs discussing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, one of the things that, that, and this starts with me being pissed off like 12 years ago, and, and it's still happening today, and that is the, an additional cost for mailing statements. I mean, I get it. I, I, I'm an electronic person. I don't, I, by no means do I want a piece of paper. But I think the irony comes in in that between the custodians, or that's usually where the cost comes from, right? Custodians want us all to get them more money. Well, if you ignore the actual people factor and just say who has more money, a person who has you know worked their whole career and is now retired and has this big lump sum to bring over, or the person who's just getting started. Well, the person just getting started probably is all electronic because they're twenty freaking five years old or something, and that's cool, but. The person who's a senior citizen who maybe doesn't have a computer or isn't comfortable with their personal things on a computer just wants to check their AOL mail. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. That's that's the frustration there. I'm all for it. That's the frustration. Yeah, I'm all for I'm all for forcing electronic statements, but to do it in this manner, um, it's 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 just once again. I mean, it's it's ticky tacks. To to hit a dollar a month charge on your hit a dollar a month charge on your statement for paper. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's just yeah. So anyway, so the, the the thing that came up with me was the the annual uh, admin charges. So you know, in our business, everything is based on basis points, and you have a, a admin fee, a platform fee, whatever. But I've seen where, in addition to that, they have a flat dollar amount, and sometimes they'll say you know over half a million, it's waived or something. But you know, it, truth is, when an advisor comes to any business, they're going to have clients all over the spectrum. And to then add these different layers uh, of flat charges in addition to a basis point charge, I don't know, it's it's just disingenuous. And then the advisor then is doing, you know, a uh, financial twister to figure out, you know, what a client is actually paying, right? And then if you have a client who has to withdraw a certain amount, all of a sudden does their fee go up? It It just breeds anger and bad yeah. business well and it even get, it, you know it even gets worse when sometimes these things aren't listed as part of your base fee right it's it's like in the small print or it's extra or it's, it's on in the, the ADV, ADV. And, yeah. right exactly and so all yeah. of a sudden there's a 145 five dollar charge that kicks in in november or some silly thing um you know that that wasn't part of the quarterly fee or monthly fee whatever the annualized thing that's on the contract um and you know look that clients will forget that you mentioned it and so then you're answering questions. I mean, I, I think if every business would think of this, you just, you know, be be a little more simple there. So what else you got? Well, that, that was really it. There's one uh, HSA bank that really, I mean, oh. we that I had oh, that yeah. was probably the worst offender of this. And, and all community banks, especially in the HSA side, they're the, they're the worst at this, where they have a low account fee. They had a electronic funds transfer fee for money coming in or leaving. For, Imagine for money coming in? For depositing money. Yeah, at the time they had that uh, statement charges everything. So it was, it, you're, I mean, you're paying multiple charges a month, and and so I, I think um, I think those days are gone. I think companies are getting more creative. They're not getting more transparent. They're just getting more creative. Um, and so that that kind of brings me to my overwhelming theme here: the more variables you insert into the pricing structure. Uh, the more abuse is, is possible and also the more confusing it gets. So having these different tiers, you know, below 50, you know, there's a charge, but above 50, there isn't, you know, and all these different hands in the pot, it, it gets it gets quite confusing. So I think a lot of times it's it's just keeping it simple and, and making sure that there isn't any surprises uh, depending on how your your business grows or how your clients' accounts grow. Yeah, simple and transparent. That seems like such an easy thing to 
to say and do. But uh, this is a, I'll add one little moment here, one little tidbit, and that is, you know, we always say financial planning is where most advisors can really add the most value in their value proposition. And so this is an opportunity to take some of these fun stories that we've had and, and use them to educate your clients about things that they need to keep their eyeballs out for. Because you may be able to save them some money in the long run or do better at comparisons, make them more money wise. So anyway, that's just a little, a little, a little. Well, note. no, that's a great idea. Like you should do a, like a top 10 uh, pricing tricks of everyday companies or something like yeah, that. There you go. Um, you know, especially now, like with things like Instacart and Uber Eats, there's always these extra things in there. And, and, and so we've always been on record saying, look, it's not about high fee, low fee. It's just about being clear what the hell it actually yeah. is. Right. Um, all right. All right. So what do, you, uh, what do you got this week? Recommendations. All right. So this actually lends itself to the very beginning. My first example was about shop charges, shop fees, whatever you want to call them. Shop supplies is often what the line item is. And and I first sort of became aware of that uh, while listening to, a po- uh, not a podcast, but a radio show from NPR. And it's called Car Talk. Uh, it's two mechanics. These old geezers were funny as all get out. I mean, even my wife and my son, who couldn't care less about cars, we, we would all listen to it and just be, I mean, sometimes you almost have to pull off the side of the road. It was so freaking funny. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to put links in the show notes for not just the car talk. Uh, it's not on anymore. It was on for decades on NPR. Um, one of the two gentlemen is now dead. They're two brothers. But um, I'm going to put the link for the car talk and then also the specific episode that referred to shop supplies and the click and clacks, you know, their discussion between um, what those are, why they are, etc. cetera. Um, it, it's always a good, it's always a good time. That's fine. Christopher also put in the show notes uh, a link to what the hell NPR is for anyone under 50. <laughs> um, oh, you're that funny. Might be, that may be helpful. You're funny. Be helpful. Funny, man. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> I mean, true. Uh, well, let's see. Christopher probably doesn't even know what NPR. Well, actually, he does. Uh, um, all right. So my uh, my recommendation this week is is Ted Lasso on Apple TV. Uh, I got referred to this uh, through someone I follow on Twitter, and, and they were talking about the uh, screenwriting and the acting, and it is absolutely a phenomenal show. It's uh, about an American football coach from I think Kansas or, or Iowa or, or one of those states that don't matter that went over to England and became a soccer coach or European football coach. And it's just hilarious. He's like a happy-go-lucky, super optimistic person. And uh, it, it, was, it was one of those shows that we just binge straight through. Uh, and so I, I highly recommend some Ted Lasso. Be more like Ted Lasso. Yeah, I'll have to check it out because I've seen the, the, like the trailer or whatever, and I couldn't tell if it was going to be funny or stupid. So uh, now that I know that it's funny, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely check it out. Um, on that note, uh, unless you have final thoughts, um, let's, uh, let's wrap it up, man. I, I appreciate all the listeners. Um, if you, we would love it if, as this goes out to our, our website and, and social media and so forth, let us know if you have other things pricing that pisses you off make a, make a comment, make a suggestion, um, and, uh, and we'll go with it from there. So on that note, thanks everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks.